I'm going to give you a two-part series on the derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. In the first part, I'm going to show you how to find the derivative of an exponential function, and it doesn't matter what base that exponential function has. We're going to start out with e to the x. Usually that is a function that's not as easy for students as maybe 2 to the power x, but it's pretty powerful, e to the x is, in calculus. If you don't have a graphing calculator or computer near you, pause this video and go grab one. I'm going to ask you to use your graphing calculator or your computer to do a numerical limit. Here is the numerical limit I'm asking you to do. So we want to do the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 over x. So hopefully you're going to use numbers like 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth, negative 1 tenth, negative one hundredth, negative one thousandth, and look for a pattern in those outputs. All right, have you paused the video and come up with your answer? Hopefully you found out this limit was equal to one. We'll circle back to that later. That's just going to be useful for something we prove later. So we're going to be looking at the graph of e to the power x, which has the points 0, 1, e to the power 0 is 1, 1, e, and e is about 2.71, 2, e squared, 3, e cubed, and so on. We're going to find the derivative of this equation. So hopefully you can see if we're doing this formal derivative, we're finding the derivative of e to the power x between two points, one at zero and one just a little bit away from zero. You can see the structure of slope y minus y over x minus x. So maybe let's erase And we have one point at zero, one point h units away, so that's zero plus h. The horizontal distance between those two points is h. And we start off with the slope of the secant line. Uh oh. I'm trying to get a different color pen here. There we go. Okay. So one point at zero, one point h units away, so that's at zero plus h. Right now we have the slope of a secant line. We'll apply the limit as h goes to zero. One y value is e to the zero plus h. The other y value is e to the zero. And zero plus h minus zero are our two x values. Let's figure out what that limit is numerically, and then what would that limit give us? Well, once, once h becomes zero, once h gets infinitesimally close to zero, that wasn't a great line. We're no longer going to have a secant line to e to the x at 0. We're going to have a tangent line to e to the x. So you can go ahead and grab your calculator. I have mine right next to me. And we get 0 0.95162, 0 0.99502, 0 0.9995. As the x value, I'm sorry, as the h values get very, very close to 0 from the right hand side, do you see a pattern in those y values? I'm sure you do. They're getting closer and closer to 1. Let's choose h values less than 0. Down with negative 1 tenth, our structure gives us 0 0.95163. I, I see some symmetry. At negative 100, 0 0.99502. At negative 100, 0.9995. So hopefully you think this limit is definitely equal to 1 or 
the slope of the tangent line of e to the x right here at x equals 0 is 1. All right, what do you see in this structure? So hopefully you see a limit out front, okay? And the numerator is y minus y. The denominator, x minus x, so we're looking at slope. Of what function? Hopefully you're saying e to the x. And we're talking about two points, the first at 1, and the second one a little farther away at 1 plus h. Once we evaluate this limit, we're going to have the slope of e to the x at x equals 1. If you want to do that, grab your calculator, pause the video. If not, I will show you what I got. 2.58682.7047 Ooh, symmetry again. All right, so it definitely appears that the slope of e to the x at 1 is 2.7169 something. I'll bet you've seen that number before somewhere. I'll tell you in a moment what that number is. First, let's see what we're finding here. Again, a similar structure y minus y over x minus x. We're finding the slope of the graph of e to the x at exactly x equals 2, which is why this structure has e to the power 2 plus h. That's this y value. e to the power 2 over 2 plus h minus 2. That's the slope of a secant line. Once the limit as h goes to 0 is applied, 2 plus h moves closer to 2. Two points move into 1. I'm quickly going to write down these numbers. I'm sure you don't mean, need me to read them out loud. So again, some really nice symmetry, and it definitely appears this limit exists and is 7.3854 something. I don't have enough granularity after that. The eagle-eyed viewer will realize that this 7.3854 is an approximation of e squared. What is 2.7169? That's an approximation, each of these, of... E. So what the heck am I saying? Well, the slope of E at 1 is E. The slope of E at 2 is E squared. And we're going to find what the derivative of the function E to the X is. If you're guessing, that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, you are correct, but we still have to show how to do that. Otherwise, you are just memorizing something somebody else told you. All right, so we're going to think of the graph of e to the x. We're going to think of one point at x, another point somewhere else. Let's call it x plus h, a little bit away from x. And let's find the slope of that secant line. That would be e to the power x plus h, that's y value, minus e to the power x over x plus h minus x. 
but we don't want the slope of a secant line. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line to e to the x. So limit as h approaches 0. There we go. So we know the x's in the denominator divide out. I was interrupted for a moment there. Someone came in. Sorry. So the x's in the denominator subtract to be 0. And what are we left with? We're actually going to rearrange. We're going to factor the e to the x out of the numerator. First, let's rewrite e to the x multiplied by e to the h. And let's think about why that's okay. e to the x multiplied by e to the h, that's two bases with the same exponent. So maybe you should think about what would you do if you had x squared times x cubed? That would be x to the power 5 because you do x to the power. 2 plus 3. So that's all we're doing here. In reverse, x to the power e plus h is the same as e to the power x multiplied by e to the power h. I think I may have said s there. So don't forget, limit out front as h is still approaching 0. And the limit as h goes to 0, uh, e to the x multiplied by e to the h minus 1 over h. Well, the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x is e to the x, since no h's are involved. And the limit that's left, h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h, we actually did at the beginning. That was, we had a slightly different form. We had x goes to 0 of e to the x minus 1 over x. That was equal to 1. And so we're going to use that now. So, hopefully you can see that we did the formal derivative of e to the x, and we got that the derivative of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x, or e to the power x is its own derivative. That's interesting and powerful, or e to the x grows at its own growth rate. All sorts of weird stuff comes out of that. So armed with that information, we can combine with some other things we know. So we could use the chain rule, the derivative of e to the power 2x. Well, let's see. The derivative of e to a power is e to that same power. And our power is 2x. So chain rule, we're going to have to multiply by 2. Although when you put the 2 there, it looks a little bit ugly. So I'm going to move my 2 out front. Well, okay, this is getting a little more complicated, but it's not bad. The derivative of 3 times something is 3 times that derivative. And e to a power has the derivative of e to the power. Our power is sine of x, which has a rate of change of cosine of x. We're using the power rule. I don't really like that order. It doesn't look pretty to me. So I'm going to write it as 3 cosine of x multiplied by e to the power sine of x. Ooh, a little bit complicated. e to the power of e to the power x. So think of this e to the x as an exponent on e. So the derivative, we start with the outermost function, which is this lowest base e, I guess. The derivative of e to a power is e to that same power. Our power is e to the x, which has a derivative of e to the x. Now, we're allowed to leave the derivative looking like that. But we have the same base e raised to different powers, so we can combine e to the power of e to the x plus x. I am zooming in on accident. Okay, so the next time, in the next section, we're going to work with logarithms. That's all for now.